Not only is my name, Mark Miller, a very common one, but I am also told that I have features very similar to a few people I know online. Then there have been times when I have been mistaken for another person, and right to my face, someone swears I look exactly like someone they know. So the concept of the doppelganger is not outside my realm of possibility. Now, today's films take this concept and go in vastly different yet fascinating directions. Hatching is a rich thunder punch of a movie with amazing effects and one powerful emotional story. This is M.L. Miller Frights, Best in Horror Countdown, 2021 through 2022. Counting down the best in horror films, released from October 1st, 2021 through September 30th, 2022. According to me, M.L. Miller. Here we go. Number 8. Hatching, a.k.a. Pahan Ha Toja, was released on May 17th, 2012. It's streaming on Hulu from IFC Films. It's directed by Hannah Bergholm and written by Ilja Rautzi. From the outside of their idyllic home, Tinja, played by Siri Solalina, seems to be living the perfect existence. At least, that's what her mother, played by Sophia Heikkila, tries to communicate while maintaining her video blog for her scores of online fans. After a crow accidentally enters their home, Tinja's mother murders it and tells Tinja to toss it in the rubbish. But that night, Tinja hears the crow screeching in the woods, and after putting it out of its misery, she finds an egg the crow was protecting. Feeling responsible for the egg, Tinja takes it home and secretly takes care of it. But what hatches out of that egg turns out to be a nightmare and the antidote for Tinja's ever-so-perfect family. Hatching is an amazing modern fable set in Finland, but the themes are as relevant all over the world as they are there. It's a film about those obsessed with the image of perfection, not really caring about the ugliness inside. It's a comment on social media addiction and how we live one life online and live a quite different one in reality. It's also a wonderful story about the complexity of a teenager growing into an adult, facing responsibilities, keeping secrets, and understanding that the world is not the fair and perfect place the fairy tales promise. This is a densely themed film that could be examined and dissected multiple times from multiple angles, and it would only crack the surface. But by framing the story in a dreamlike utopia, the locale and situation serves as a blank slate where all of this thematic heft can be projected. It reminds me of a David Lynch or John Waters film in that aspect. But it's also one of the most potent body horror films you're going to see this side of a Cronenberg joint. Body horror isn't just gore, though hatching is quite gory and effects heavy. With body horror, the gore and effects represent something with great thematic weight. In this case, the gore in hatching represents many things that are common in young female athletes. Once hatched, the creature must feed, but being bird-like, the creature must have the food regurgitated in order to consume it. This requires Tina to eat and vomit up the food, then the creature laps up the vomit. You bet your sweet ass it's goddamn gross. But it's also a shining metaphor for bulimia and eating disorders that are quite common in young athletes. As the creature begins to grow, it begins to display more human traits, given the care and feeding of its surrogate mother, Tinja. Again, this requires some absolutely gruesome scenes of metamorphosis. The effects are flawless and surreal. While the horrors happening are quite fantastic, the effects are which are a combination of CGI and practical, elevate the story by being so disgustingly realistic. Anyone who has taken care of birds know that they can be pretty damn gross, and that point is driven home with hatching. Hatching also encapsulates the epitome of a truly dysfunctional relationship between Tinja and her mother. Both performances incite feelings of frustration and sorrow, as Tinja's mother seems to care more about her image and making herself happy by living through her daughter's achievements than taking a second to think about what Tinja is actually feeling. If there is a true monster in this movie, it's Tinja's mother, and Sophia Haikila plays the part amazingly. From telling of inappropriate secrets to Tinja to cuckolding her own husband, Tinja's mom, who doesn't get or deserve a name, is the one you want to root against in this one. 
Hatching works on many, many levels. It presents a truly surreal scenario and treats it seriously. It presents all kinds of faults in the human condition and provides no easy answers. Horror is often quite predictable, and more times than not, once I'm halfway through, I can predict how the film is going to end. But with Hatching, I had no clue, and I loved it that director Hannah Bergholm was able to surprise this jaded viewer. And if you're wondering, the ending is quite perfect, if not dark and nihilistic. This is one of the best horror films of the year. It's a successful monster movie, but also so much more, and will definitely prompt deep discussion afterwards. That's the kind of horror movie I want to see more of. While I feel Duel is more of a sci-fi film, as it involves cloning, it still has quite a surreal and bizarre sense of humor. Plus, Karen Gillan is fantastic in a dual role in Duel. Duel was released on May 20th, 2022. It's available to rent from Amazon Prime from XYZ Films. It's directed and written by Riley Stearns. Set in the near future, Sarah, played by Karen Gillan, finds out she has a terminal illness and decides to undergo a program to make a clone of herself to ease the suffering of those around her. But after the clone is made, Sarah goes into remission. Because no two people can exist at once legally, a law is passed to have Sarah fight her clone to the death in one year. The winner gets Sarah's life. With a newfound determination, Sarah hires a self-defense coach, Trent, played by Aaron Paul, to teach her how to fight and kill her opponent. But as the day grows near, Sarah begins having doubts as to whether she really wants to go through with this gladiatorial battle. Yes, the concept is ridiculous. In no way would it make your loved ones feel better to have a clone of you around reminding them of how they've lost the real you. It'd be like stuffing your dead animal and setting it up in the living room to pet every now and then. But people actually do that, and if that's the case, maybe some kind of batshit crazy person might agree to do what Sarah does in this film. Granted, Sarah is not exactly all there to begin with. She's a somewhat robotic, somewhat neurotic basket case who rarely leaves her apartment, is very particular about pretty much everything, and basically lives a very secluded and sad lifestyle despite the fact that she has a boyfriend, Peter, played by Beulah Cole, who constantly goes on business trips and most likely is having an affair with his assistant. Gillen plays up all of these quirks, but honestly, I don't know if this is simply her demeanor or that she's kind of finds herself typecast in these robotic roles. I never saw her on Doctor Who, but Gillen's performance as Sarah is very similar to her role as the vengeful blue cyborg Nebula from Guardians of the Galaxy. Either way, whether this is kind of her thing, or if she is just playing a more nuanced version of Nebula, Gillen really portrays an interesting and downright peculiar character in Duel. For the most part, this is kind of an irreverent comedy. It understands that the situation Sarah finds herself in is kooky, and while everyone plays things straight, the comedy emerges quite often. I found myself surprisingly amused by this offbeat situation Sarah finds herself in, and especially the way she reacts to it. After immediately finding out she has a terminal illness, Sarah's only response is, why am I not crying about this? Though she may play someone who may be slightly on the autistic scale, but most definitely is on the quirky scale, Killen makes Sarah likable. I couldn't help but root for her to gain the confidence and skill to reclaim her life. Part of the fun is seeing Sarah's double acclimate all too well into Sarah's life. Her boyfriend likes Sarah's double more. Her mom even seems to like her better. While Sarah is focused on beating her double, she begins losing the life she had, which is kind of a good thing because it was quite a miserable life at that. Seeing this transformation in Sarah is subtle, but Gillen really fires up the nuances to make these little changes work. This basically is a movie about a wake-up call. It's a story about a person finding out how to appreciate her own life. Adding to the quirkiness is Aaron Paul's training as Trent. He's training Sarah to murder someone, and the matter-of-factly way he teaches her to kill in various different ways and harden herself to do so are absurd and very darkly humorous. Paul has had the misfortune of being typecast after Breaking Bad, but this performance, which is equally off-kilter as Sarah, shows that he can do much more than simply say, Betch, all the time. 
I found the ending of Duel to be tragically poetic and outside of the norm. It really resonated with me and speaks to how good the character of Sarah really is. While it suggests a big bombastic battle, like one that was shown at the beginning where a clone and the original go head-to-head with various weapons on a battlefield with a bloodthirsty crowd watching and cheering, the end is much less spectacular, yet resonates so much more. Walking away from Duel, I felt uplifted and deflated all at once. It's a sheer tragedy as someone has to die, but the way it plays out is altogether brilliant, shocking, and heartbreaking. I look forward to seeing Gillen in more movies, as she is an oddball actress who doesn't go for typical roles. And you should look forward to seeing Duel, a totally bonkers but subtly poignant story about claiming one's life as your own. See this weird little sci-fi flick. I think it's going to surprise you. As always, feel free to agree, disagree, or give me your own picks for your favorite horror movies. It's October, so let's talk horror. Come back tomorrow for the next level in the Best in Horror Countdown 2021 through 2022. Be sure to hit all of the pertinent bells and whistles down below, and you'll never miss a post. Happy Halloween, folks.